Hi everyone, our goal for today is to identify the ways progressives attempted to improve society with a specific focus on reforming the economy. As a result of the modern technological advances, urbanization, and increased immigration, society soon began to realize that workers' needs and rights were being severely neglected. Dangerous working conditions, hard living conditions, and unsanitary practices are all at the heart of the need for reform. Let's take a closer look at the economic reforms and head to Chicago, where the meatpacking industry was one of the earliest calls for change. One of the most famous progressives was a muckraker named Upton Sinclair. He wrote a book called The Jungle, where he revealed the unsanitary and disgusting conditions of the meat industry. Sinclair's book, which you'll soon read an excerpt of in class, prompted regulations to protect food safety. Although Sinclair's original aims was to shed light on the horrible working conditions, he actually exposed just how poorly the meat that everyday Americans were consuming was handled as well. Sinclair famously said, although I aimed at Americans' hearts, I accidentally hit them in the stomach. The first regulation was the Meat Inspection Act, which required meatpacking to be done under strict sanitary conditions. Additionally, his book led to the Pure Food and Drug Act, which made it illegal to mislabel food products and created the Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA, which still inspects all meat and food products to this day. We can thank Upton Sinclair for trusting in the food products we consume daily. Another important reform that came out of Chicago was a focus on helping the poor. An important goal of many progressives was to improve the lives of poor people in the cities. One approach was the Settlement House, a community center that provided social services to the urban poor. Most settlement houses were privately funded and run by volunteers. The individual who pioneered this movement was Jane Adams, who ran a settlement house in Chicago known as Hull House. Settlement house workers gave mothers classes in child care and taught English to immigrants. They also provided theater, art, and dance programs for adults. By 1911, there were more than 400 settlement houses around the country. Two other important muckrakers that focused their journalism on improving the lives of others was Ida Tarbell and Jacob Rees. Jacob Rees was a photographer from New York City. Rees used his camera to shed light on the crowded, unsafe, rat-infested tenement buildings where the urban poor lived. Between 1890 and 1903, he published several works, including the book How the Other Half Lives. This book shocked the nation's conscience and led to reform. This included the New York Tenement Act, which made it illegal for a tenement to not have lighting, fire safety, building height, and room space. His photographs included some of the most famous photos of the era. Additionally, muckraker Ida Tarbell wrote about corporate greed in her book titled The History of Standard Oil. Her work focused on the famous oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller, who used ruthless methods to ruin his competitors, charge higher prices, reap huge profits, and thereby hurt everyday Americans. Her book led Congress to investigate Rockefeller's Standard Oil Company, and they determined that it was a monopoly. As a result, the Standard Oil industry was broken up. Finally, three years later, in 1914, Congress passed the Clayton Antitrust Act, giving the government more power to attack monopolies who had complete control over businesses. Curbing the control and power of monopolies was one of the most important economic reforms of the progressive period. The last major reform of the era was key in reforming industrial conditions for the average worker and especially child labor. In the early 1900s, the United States had the highest rate of industrial accidents in the world. Long hours, poor ventilation, hazardous fumes, and unsafe machinery threatened not only workers' health, but also their lives. Each year, some 30,000 workers died on the job, while another half a million were injured. In March 1911, a fire at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory in New York City shocked Americans and focused attention on the need to protect workers. Workers in the factory had little chance to escape the raging fire because managers had locked most of the exits. The fire killed 146 workers, most of them young Jewish women. Many jumped from the windows in desperation. Inside the smoldering ruins, firefighters found many more victims. After the blaze, outraged progressives intensified their calls for reform. New York passed laws to make workplaces safer, and other cities and states followed suit. 
Many states also adopted workers' compensation laws, which set up funds to pay workers who were hurt on the job. Child labor was also a problem, and a lawyer named Florence Kelly helped convince the state of Illinois to ban child labor, and other states soon passed similar laws. Progressives also tried to better children's lives by improving education. A number of states passed laws that required children to attend school until a certain age. Educator John Dewey criticized American schools for teaching children to memorize facts, but not to think creatively. Dewey wanted schools to teach new subjects such as history and geography, as well as practical skills like cooking and carpentry. His ideas helped shape the school system we have today. So to summarize, with the help of muckrakers like Sinclair, Adams, Tarbell, and Reese, working conditions improved, business practices became more fair, harsh living conditions were exposed, and children were granted the opportunity to an education. Many of the economic reforms that took place helped shape modern America.